podcast. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to uh, Photography Live and Uncut. I took a I took a break last week because um, I was very fortunate to spot an invitation to um, uh, a launch of a new magazine called The Fall, and uh, I'm delighted. My guest this evening is the photographic editor for that uh, director editor for that magazine. I'll find out in a minute. Named Alex Lambrex. Alex, welcome back to my show. Hey, Paul. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, very well, me. thanks. No problem Bye. at all. We we spoke about this magazine a few few months before it was sort of being muted and everything, and I, I really thought was very interested how it was going to uh, come about. Let, let's let's really start off. How did the magazine come about? So about a uh, sorry about that. I'm going to mute that. So a year before I started with the magazine, let me give it one second because we don't want to have this making noise all the day. Oh. Yeah, don't worry. So a year before I started, the uh, the owner, Andre Gale, gave me a, me a call and said, Hi, Alex, how are you going? I'm going to call you in about a year's time. I want to offer you a position in my new magazine. And I've had quite a few different magazine offers over, over the years at different times because I've worked in magazines before. Um, yeah. All Access, Anglomania, More Human, all, that, all those ones, to, to name a few at a, at a kind of like an owner level. Um, and he said, particularly, it's about... Uh, have bringing you on as a photographic director I want you to teach and show people who are not used to handling handling a camera how to shoot another person because I'm interested in the creative um, field the, the creative area that, that that art that can be created when you, you you match two people that are known for being great in a certain field let's say uh, someone can be a singer but have a passion for a fashion or someone can be um, uh, an actor, but really love racing, you know, whatever it might be. And you find that it, it's often the case that they're actually better at the other thing than the one that they're known for. And it's very mm -hmm. often, actually. Um, there are some people who are fantastic composers, but happen to be very famous actors, um, et cetera. And I thought, okay, yeah, I can do that. It's obvious. I, I teach people the tricks and the, and the secrets and the tips. I'm not one of those that says that um, photography is a sacred realm where only only the elites who have passed through the, you know, the pearly gates are allowed to pretend or call themselves photographers. I believe that there's a lot more to photography than just the technical side. So for me to give someone the technical is quite, um, quite interesting. It's fun. And I was interested to see what kind of things we could create in this environment as well. So true to his, um, his promise, I'd forgotten. And he called me and said, Hey, remember I called you a year ago? I said, yeah. And he goes, are you ready to start? <laughs> and, I, and I thought, well, how often do you need me? And he said, well, not that often. You know, we're just going to, we're going to do about probably 30 shoots here, um, LA, New York, and I want you to direct them. I want you to be involved with uh, coming up with the concepts and helping me match the right people to get the, the, the greatest content we can, we can achieve. So um, to cut a long story short, I started pretty much right away. We went to LA to meet with some... Uh, sort of like celebrity management agents and, th and people like that. So we could get the right kind of, um, the right kind of PRs giving us the movie stars and A-listers that we wanted to get the kind of following behind the magazine uh, for, for a certain section of it. And we pulled some, some, some pretty huge names right off the start. And it, we walked in there, um, showed them some of my work and said, look, this is all about real photography. We're not going to be doing any of that glossy overproduced crap. And that you sh their eyes just lit up. They were just happy to be either shooting or be shot in a magazine where they weren't being asked by their agency, hey, go and see. And I won't rattle off the names of the other magazines. They're all the biggest ones. And they rattled off, all of them would rattle off the top five and say, I'm sick to death of having to go in for a meeting, jump into the studio, do two hours of makeup, have everybody put a flash in my face. Um, some of them have said that some of the top photographers were quite rude to them and saying all sorts of things to get certain reactions out of them. When they've done... When they do their, their typical PR for a movie, let's say, they do maybe 15, 20, 30 of these. It's like a, it's like a machine that they go through. So the idea of creating something interesting of the style of photography that we were showing them that we like, we said, look, let's, let's rewind the clock. Remember when you used to like about photography? And we'd go through and we'd show them the black and white and the natural lighting and it's just eyes lit up and ideas and let's get this person involved and let's do this. And, you know, so that was really exciting. And then it came up to coming up with interesting concepts for them. So I would pick um, 
specific themes or moods. So, for example, we might have gone with a, an Eggleston theme for one of them. Yeah. And then in the end, they end up looking a little bit different. You know, there's another one that I did, and uh, the mood board was very Hopper-esque um, because we wanted the magazine to look different all the way through. So you're flicking through the whole way, but looking quite analog and, and underproduced. And luckily, through my work, I'm always shooting in very different kind of circumstances. So it was fun for me to get the right locations and set the mood, and you know, the styling, the lighting, and the film formats or the, or the digital format, whatever we're going to do, everything plays into it. Um, and also matching the characters of the people who we're, who we're going to have shooting. So if you think, for example, Tiger and Helena Christensen, that shoot was originally going to be shot by a number of people, but due to scheduling, it kept getting moved. So that like, like Michael Madsen was going to shoot it and his dates um, on a film just get pushed back, pushed back, and Tiger's sitting there going, look, I'm ready now. Come on, you can't change it again. Someone else is going to shoot. Moby was going to shoot it. His dates fell through. Um, and I contacted a very close friend of mine, Warren, and he said, well, look, let me see if I can get you Helena. And she just, uh, you know, a day later, she was like, I'm coming. I'm flying over. But still, I said, okay, well, I've got a location out in the, out in the desert. We went out to Palmdale, that fantastic location. We took some references of um, some Eggleston diner for the compositions, but not the treatments. And she is a photographer herself, you know, you know Helena Christensen. Yeah. She, um, she turned up and she said, I love the references. And she was already had the shots in her mind. We went through, we kind of said, okay, here we go. We planned out the 10, 15 shots together, which is what my role is as photographic director. Um, and we just worked as a fantastic team together because I, I also let them create their own thing. You know, you can't be sitting there pushing yeah. the this button, especially when you've given them the reins. You've got to let them do that. But... You know, sometimes I found um, a lot of people found it really refreshing to have an assignment that was so creative as opposed to the kind of stuff that's already been set up by some of the other more commercial did you ever Did you ever find at one stage uh, when you're getting a couple of these projects together here that maybe this is not going to work or were you bullish or, were, or were straight from the start? We, <laughs> we had one that didn't work. Um, I won't say who was a really big one, no. <laughs> and uh, it didn't work for a number of creative reasons. It was it got a little bit too arty in one, at one point, and um, the styling was a little bit off, and the actress wasn't happy, and you know the hair and makeup team wasn't what we're used to here in the UK. We were working in LA, uh, mm -hmm. it, ju it just wasn't spot on, and it, it kind of fell apart. We had to pull it. Yeah. I'm just gonna just gonna put it up and show them. Uh, is the front cover, um, uh, which um, oh, uh, where where are we going to be able to buy this? Uh, obviously, quality uh, magazine stores, but um, it's going to be available in Smiths as well, isn't it, Alex? It's available W H Smiths from the seventh of February, I believe. I should know that, but I think right. it's the seventh of February because we also yeah. have a date in the states of the seventeenth of February. That's when it starts okay. to go right over there. Um, let, let me let me let me yeah. just say this because when uh, when you showed me the magazine and the evening and uh, in Christ you were so busy it was just sort of manic there wasn't it with so many people wanting to stop and talk to you about it and I was totally unacceptable. I think I said to someone I spent the most time with the most uh, the most aggressive whoever had the, yeah. whoever was aggressive enough to grab onto me that's who I let, yeah. let me let me just show you these these uh, two images here which uh, is by your good self of. Uh, of the uh christian the here Chris, uh, of uh, christian there um amazing amazing work as you know i'm a big fan of your work uh, in the first place try and get that light out of the way i haven't got a cam to show it but the thing i'll tell you about yeah. another one so when i was asked uh do you want to come and do the magazine i said my first thing was i'll do it but you've got to let me go and shoot story because because when we first met we talked a lot. He talked a lot about the celebrity side of it, and you know, as you know, I couldn't care <laughs> two weeks about that. Um, I said, "Well, as long as I'm allowed to shoot stories like this," and I showed him Superman and his music and the and the and, and the whole concept. And you know, Dakota Pipeline was just flaring up, and he went, "I love it. That's the first shoot you're going to do." And I went, "My man." <laughs> just show, uh, just show a final here, which. Um... 
superb image there superman Thank so what I, what I want to do I, I i must be honest i've looked i've flicked through it i haven't read every single article there's some great articles that have been written in any case and uh i must be honest i've uh i have in actual fact sent emails to the photographers and to some of the writers and said congratulations on the work that you've produced oh, but uh, what's been put together here is is man the thing which i've got to ask you though and i mean this sincerely looking through this there are no advertisements no this is an issue zero this is so issue, maybe, right yeah. so then we're, what we're doing here is you so, said to me as you i was about to leave you're building the brand yeah so typically what happens with an issue zero i mean sometimes issue zero is literally a few pages in a ball clip <laughs> you know yeah. um but we were already just generating the best content right from the bat everybody wanted to collaborate yeah and uh we said let's just do it properly let's get it there let's hold off on the advertising because we don't want yeah. to be i mean we've got a huge sales team behind us it, there's there's quite a lot it's quite a good marketing plan the, the people behind this magazine work for uh, the same kind of guys that are working with yeah pop, um, i i didn't get a chance to speak to the editor but I did get a, uh, I did get it signed by the photographic editor. So, look out for it on eBay. No, being serious, and that's never going to, they're never going to sell that one. Alex, let's switch very quickly because one, the reason why we got onto the mag when we last met was we were talking about cameras and gear, yeah. and um, when uh, when I first met you, you were well involved with the uh, the Fuji gear, the X series, the X100s, and um i think at the time you just uh, switched into the uh, xt1 but you switched gear to leica um let, let's talk about leica it's it's the top end of the scale in terms of cost and money and and uh, a lot of photographers out there especially the hobbyists would only dream of of working with leicas um let's talk about this here for a second what what, what is it about leica that as in, in you've you reckon it's uh, helped you with your career Okay, I guess there's a number of answers to that, and they're all separate. They're, they're, they're in separate sections, so we could talk about the gear itself, but then also the company, what it means to be part of um, that crew. Yeah. And, uh, and then there's 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 the progression under which the the technology was a little bit slower than some of the other companies. So to mm. be honest, um, Leica approached me very early on when I started working with Fuji. So being one of the very first Fuji X photographers, I think I was one of the one of the one of the first five or ten, I got quite a lot of exposure right from the bat. And Leica was watching what Fuji was doing, obviously. They're saying, well, okay, these guys are taking some of our market. They're not exactly us, but let's see what's going on. And LFI itself contacted me. So it wasn't the London press pack um, branch or anyone like that. LFI was saying that we've we want you to shoot for us. You don't have to come on board, but here's the camera. So when I was in New York, they sent me the um, the S medium format, and at the time, I I didn't know how to use it. To be honest, it was just too big for me. It didn't fit what I was doing. I didn't have the right kind of content that I was shooting that fit for it. And so I literally sat there for like three four months on my in my in my bedroom, and I said, Look, I'm, I'm going to have to give it back to you here. Have it back. Um, I haven't done anything, but let's chat again later because I, I'm still learning, you know, I was quite new and, um, I was waiting for the system to come up to scratch. So, I mean, the M nine was great, but it had its, it had its little flaws, which now to be honest, I could do because of where I'm at and what I've learned about photography, I could probably get away with using an M nine at the time. I wasn't skilled enough to use it properly, you know. So, it, mm -hmm. so, it, so, I, so the, its limitations were my, became my limitations. When the M two forty came out, that amazing camera, you know, just just unreal. I switched over to to Leica, started using the the M two forty. It it has its it, its little drawbacks or things that you have to learn to work around, but um, but absolutely love it. Everything about it was just just miles ahead of the equipment that I was using with, with, with Fuji for what my, what I needed, you know, mm -hmm. um, the other reason to, to, to leave, to be honest is, um, and it's not an indictment on Fuji, the company itself. Um, because I, I really love the guys. I, I, I know them very well. I have a very strong relationship with the guys, even in Japan. I helped, I was one of the people that suggested that they should, they should have moved to the medium format. They invited me in for meetings to, 
to discuss why I thought so with with, with people like Zach Arias and other and other guys, um, and you know, and then they ended up doing it. So they, so they believed in us. It's great when a company believes in you, and that's fantastic. But at the same time, I was kind of pitted with other photographers that I didn't really think are improving in their photography. They're more bloggers and reviewers than actual photographers. You know, people that are waiting around to get paid by a company to go and do a speech rather than being out there and too busy because they're actually working um, and then becoming kind of mini celebrities amongst the enthusiasts. And I just, I just didn't want to be a part of that kind of scene. I wanted to improve my art, throw myself in with the big boys. So when my stuff is being shown next to someone else, I, I, I cringe that it's not going to be up to scratch because I'm, I'm, yep. I'm, I'm in a group of masters now. I mean, I'm, the, I, I'm not a master, but they certainly are. There are no kids yep. in this um, LFI, that's for sure. And um, so it was very important for me. I mean, they're very supportive. They've always had my back. They're like, just fantastic. I've got a fantastic relationship with the, with the German crew. Has it, has it opened doors for you with um, uh, commercial work with, through magazines or straight commercial work with corporate companies? Uh, I wouldn't say. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, my, 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 my shoots get posted on S League. S League is very much an in, um, pretty much an industry only fashion high end kind of um, publication that all the art directors, creative um, directors, brand managers, advertising agents, everybody in that professional realm of photography gets this. And it's kind of the best of the best kind of stuff there, you know, so like it's Alan Bond and worth it. It, it, it. They're all just unbelievable. Um, so to have my work published there alongside that obviously says something to that group of people. Um, uh. But I mean, when you're working in that realm, it's these, these people understand photography. They're not just, they don't just go on by, um, by the hype, you know, so having a badge next to my name isn't going to get me booked over somebody else. That's, so, you know, yeah. the, 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 the work has to be up to scratch and it has to meet the brief. Um, that's very. It's a very different thing. But um, but, but when you, you you say that, when you say meet the brief, how many? Is there a time where you turn up for a particular shoot and you say, no, I'm I'm not happy with this brief. I'm not happy with this uh, the the way I'm being directed. I, I want to go a particular route. Uh, have you have you ever had a situation like that? Or and and I'm secondly, have you had the front to turn around to and say you're going the wrong route with this idea? I want to shoot this way. Yeah, we've done that. Yeah, I've got to say yes, um, and that's only with a couple of clients. The majority of people know exactly what they wanted from the start. They understand the work. They understand. Um, they understand the creative process. You can start with a mood board, and you just have to pick mm -hmm. your best team so that things come together. You, there are some jobs where there are. I'm not a hired gun, and it's very obvious right from the start when they start working with me, and when we start negotiating, and when Jasmine, my agent, negotiates. They know straight away it's his way, or you know, you guys are going to create it together. But he's not just going to, yeah, um, create nonsense and follow a brief. It's, it's, it's got to be organic. It's got to be fantastic. But you mm. never know what the shoot's going to be like. That's the beautiful side of it. You have these fantastic mood boards. You think you've got a shot list. Um, and sometimes it's very close. If you look at my way present shoot, it's spot on. Every single frame was 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 drawn. Everything came out exactly how I wanted it. But that doesn't always happen when you're working with clients. And that was my own editorial, obviously. And I was, yeah. I was um, when you're working in a team, you all got to give each other, you, I don't know what the stylist is going to turn up with. They don't know what they're going to turn up with until a couple of days before because they've got to pull it. It's the latest season stuff, you know. They've yeah. never seen it before so, some of the time. So, or, and, and, and all of these elements play into it. The model, the mood of the model on the day changes the mood of the shoot. The shots will come out if you say, this is not working, let's go over here. Yeah. Um, when you're working with with um, professionals, everybody understands that. You're always a, a photographer that basically, as you we were saying before before the show, looking to improve every every time. You're not happy with sticking with the the staid photograph you know, that uh, that you've done two or three, four, five sessions on the trot. Um, how, this is quite an interesting, intriguing part that I find about you, actually, because there are some. There are, there are some for critical. Yeah, that, that yeah. mindset is absolutely critical. If you are not vastly improving, you're going backwards. You know, no matter how good your last shoot was, 
you can't just stay at that level. You need to outdo it, and you need to outdo it by a lot. Um, and that pressure is it can be intense. But luckily, I'm at such a low, the lower end where I've got so much improvement. I'm so excited because I get to collaborate with with fantastic people, and they help me boost my work. Yeah. You know? Could you could um, you give us an example of where you think? Uh, there's an aspect of your photography which has improved um, and and it's, has moved you, taken you forward. Apart from gear, I think I, I must be honest with the way you're talking. I think gear is a is a major influence to you for this way that your work is going. But is there a different aspect which has uh, occurred which has allowed you and and uh, I honestly no, and I know this sounds cliche. The gear is is irrelevant, really. I mean. I like having certain gear in the way that it, it renders. There, there are things that I like about my photography that others don't need to understand. You know, there, there, is, there, are, there are things about our work that we do which is commercial and we know that that's going to help us get booked the next time. If I show you my book online, you know, I want to put most of those images on my wall, if I'm honest. You know, I try to shoot so that all my images can be, but they, it's a, that's a commercial front of, my, front of house, you know. There is yeah. um, there is an element to the photography, the process that I love. So gear is important, but I have the best gear. I have the best gear that I want to work with. You know, I love working with my Rolleiflex. You know, it's it's you put that thing in your hands, and it, I like watches. I like um, I like toys. You know, and and, and it's a yeah. fantastic piece of equipment, and you, it slows you down. You start playing with it. Then again, the the, the SL is just a machine. It's it's incredible. It. it it helps you create some magic, but that's not what I focus on. What I focus on is how do I get my message across? How do I make my imagery deeper? This is the thing, one of the things that was frustrating me with a lot of the guys that were working with, 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 with Fuji. Unfortunately, there was guys who were there sitting there giving gear review and talking about this camera's better than this one, but they haven't created anything decent for, for decades, some of them. The last 10 years have not improved, they've done the same. I mean, I mean it, it, it's incredible but, um, that they're missing the point. The whole thing of photography is, to me, is the art side. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to paint like Leonardo to create a nice painting. There are kids that can go, look at Basquiat, you know, that's fantastic art because he just went and created his own message and it's the message that's important. It's not how clean, how, how many megapixels, how sharp is this? How well is it retouched? Um, how beautiful is the model? It's not about that. There has to be more. And that's why I don't, I'm not satisfied with a lot of my photography because I'm not saying everything I want to say, you know? No, I've got to be honest with you. And, and furthermore, with I don't, the, here's the hardest part. This is the most honest part. It's not that I'm not saying everything I want to say. Is I don't know what I want to say. That's the hardest part of art. What do you want to say? Why is it important? Why bother doing it? Why, you know, but because we're commercial and we're working, and everyone thinks, well, look, you're working, you've got an incredible day rate, you're, you're commanding this, you're flying over there, you must be doing really well. But yeah, great, we're doing well commercially, it's fun, I love it, I absolutely love it. But inside, we're still, what is it that I'm doing? Where's my art? Where's that catalog that I'm building for my retirement that I can sit back and go, okay, you can give me an award now and I'll accept it, you know? there's. There's always that part of us, um, and I think it sounds. It sounds to me that when you've finished your shoot, you're probably your worst critic. Um, I mean, sometimes I'm like I'm looking through because I, I I review in the viewfinder. I'm like, yes, got it. I'm so happy. The other side of me knows that. Wait a second, keep shooting because maybe she had her eyes closed, or maybe there was something there, something you didn't miss. You missed because you those those you know, 50 megapixels that you're looking, each of those pixels that your eye is scanning in that split second to make sure that things are right. Because I'm not, I'm working in open environments, things can come in, there's a lot of random that comes yeah. into my fields. You don't know what, it's, what you're going to get really until you get back home. You know, yeah, you have to trust it. The Superman story I love, that's a, sorry, that's an artistic story. I knew that the story was built around, he made this quote once that said, they say dance like nobody's watching and he says, I think it's the opposite. Dance like everybody's watching. Your ancestors, the future, everyone around you, your song can, 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 can bring peace to the world. And so I thought, when I shoot him, I'm not just going to shoot this guy who's been shot before with his feathers and the whole 
um, regalia, I said, I'm going to shoot him dancing. I want to show the intensity of his movement. Yeah. And that's why we've got those shots the way that they are. And I knew, okay, I'm going to shoot it at sunset. There's going to be some limitations. I've got one one assistant with me because I'm out in Montana. I planned it in Let, Let's uh, so much enjoy you. Let's have a let's have a look at it because I'm just gonna I just got it on the on the screen share. Um, I'm just you, gonna. You gonna share your screen? Okay. Yeah, I share my screen up here and then I'll. Um, I mean, that's the, uh, that came out exactly as it was planned, and there was. I'm very satisfied with it. I'm very happy with that shoot. I, there's nothing I yeah. would have changed. I mean, if I went again, I mean, I don't think you can do shoots twice. And that's what I don't think anybody does. Um, no. So you should be seeing now on the screen uh, this uh, this shoot which Alex did, and and hopefully, when Alex talks about the images, uh, it, <laughs> he won't interrupt the image on the on the show. Um, well, that you see on the screen. No, it, didn't, it doesn't change it, does it? It doesn't change it like it did last time. Um, but so, talk, talk us through what was your idea? You want this was this was the set that basically you insisted that you wanted to do when you originally spoke to the uh, the to to the uh, to the owner of the magazine, yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what I was going to see out there. I've never been to a powwow. I've never been on an Indian reservation. I've seen photos of Superman. I've seen him perform. I spoke to him. Um, we've become very good friends now, and you know, I, I've learned a lot from him. He, he's a fantastic, fantastic guy, um, and I I knew kind of what the landscape might have been like, and I knew I wanted to shoot at sunset in, in a specific tone and in a, in, a, in, a, in a certain way, but it came out more beautiful than I expected. But at the same time, exactly what I expected. <laughs> if that makes yeah, sense. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that so that was that was one where I planned and and it went to, and it went well. Yeah, this is the, the there's there's two images here which to me just just yeah, go. They're, they're the pow. Ones. Yeah, they're the this two. One, that go yeah, and this one. Uh, I just love this one. I just love it. Thank you. That's that's probably my favorite also. Of that that's fantastic. Yeah. That people see that. It's uh, it, it's oh look at that. It's great work. Colors are fantastic. And you're showing the movement of uh, of him dancing away. Yeah, is that that intensity? And then that that. And then and then the, and then the straight soft, ball, right? Yeah, he's strong. You know, he's a strong character. Yeah. So this is way. This is one uh, which um, you've now sort of taken to be your your front page of your website. Which again, um, beautiful contrast showing in this uh, in this image. Yeah, and this, is, I mean, this is this is kind of. It's kind of, it's a very me kind of it's a very me shot. If you remember the kids, yeah. photography, there's always that humor in there, and this whole story has got humor all the way through it. If you read the story, um, Wade's a very close friend of mine. He's a man about town in in LA to say the least, um, and this is just him, you know. So when we said let's do this, he said, "Great, I've got the best location. We'll go to Helen Mirren's um, mansion," and I said, "That sounds awesome. Send me some photos," and I already knew before we got there exactly what the shots were going to be, and we. Yeah. Right away, Jasmine was in there, as you can see on the right. Yeah, I can see Jasmine on the right there. Yeah, and and I think this is something else which is coming out the the uh, the, the uh, taking the photograph here using the light and uh, exposing for the light is your is one of your favourite uh, sayings when we're going out and workshops for the highlights. Uh, yeah, yeah, exposing for the highlights. Yes, and, and this this just I'm going to finish on this one because mm -hmm. it just makes, just makes me laugh. It looks as though it looks as though she's pushing her, but it's not. She's, she's obviously well, she touch her. She did touch her. <laughs> Otherwise, doesn't want to fall on like that. Um, how many how many takes did that take to get it right? This is actually the first take. But the funny thing is, I knew I had to put it on uh, rapid fire. And yeah. when I reviewed the images quickly, because we were losing the sun as well, I I went, damn it, I don't have it. Quickly, put her in another outfit. So she came in another outfit. I didn't like it. And I thought, oh, what a shame. We've missed it. You know, I'm not going to throw her in again. She's just too wet now. Yeah. And believe it or not, when I was reviewing the images, a few days later, I went, no way I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really, that was really fantastic. You know, but that was one of those moments where you go, look, I tried and then it didn't work. I must admit, when I saw the image, I thought to myself, I wonder, 
I wonder how many times he's had to get Jasmine out there, dry it down and get it back in there just well, before I, the light went as I well. I know what it feels like to think you haven't got it, but I'm also so happy that I did get it because I honestly believe yeah. you haven't got it. Everyone's a little bit a little bit winded because they saw it happening. I thought, well, this is just great. But, um, yeah, I couldn't be happy. So, so basically, with regards to the way you're looking, you're, you're constantly looking to improve your work, which is great, and I, and I do understand where you're coming from because there are a number of photographers out there that – they, well, I, I suppose really to a degree, the reason why they do it, Alex, is the fact that it's it's a tried and tested way for them. They make money off the back of it there and they do get work on the basis of their style of work. And so they feel as though they've got to carry on that line and they're not looking to continue, you know, continuously uh, look to improve or look to change a style uh, because it's that, like you've always said to us, I'm going to take you outside your comfort zone um and i think some photographers like to stay in the comfort zone because that's from they're familiar the way it worked they're familiar with their gear they're familiar with the work that they've done before and they're familiar with what uh, they're going to be briefed to do I, but I think, you yeah. you want to you want to so cross that don't you you want to if dare i say go against the grain and say no the next project i do i want to improve upon what i've done before I have to. I have to do that. But I think um, I just realized something. Well, and I've, I've, I've mentioned it before, but I realized while you were speaking there, the term photographer puts us all into a certain bag. But I think we deserve the luxury of being able to say that we might use a camera, but we're not all doing the same thing. So you wouldn't say that all types of painters are painters. You know, you'd call them artists. You've got a, someone can be a street artist, someone can be classical, someone can do um, abstract work. Someone, you know, there. I mean, it goes on and on, um, and and it's always changing. But with photographers, because we have a camera, everyone calls us photographers. I, yes. I, I there is nothing that um, could be further a partner with some of our with some of our genres of photography and what we want to do with our work yet we are constantly being compared and we compare ourselves to other people who carry cameras you know yeah and the shame it's a shame that we're called photographers because that becomes a title and i think the title is limiting because i i, I don't like to use the word artist but i have something i want to say and i use a camera and I use all the tricks that we have learned in photography and I stay within that two dimensions because I love it. And I think that there's, it can be expanded upon. You can keep doing something new. You can, you can do something fantastic, but I can't be compared to a wedding photographer. I can't be compared to a street photographer. Really. I can't be compared, you know, if I'm working in fashion and I'm competing with other fashion photographers, there's a level there where we're competing for a certain, Genre, sometimes we're competing within certain brands and certain genres of photography, but even then we're vastly different, you know, and we don't mm -hmm. want to be the same as another. You know, I don't want to look like, I don't want my photos to look like Mario Tosinos. I don't want them to look like Nick Knight's, not at all. I don't want them to look like Rankin's or Ellen Von Unworth or, or anyone's for that matter. We have to set our own stage. So we're not, um, e even there in our own little realm of photography, our own little genre of photography, we're not all the same. We're, we're not just photographers. We're creating our own thing. Um, so I think. Yeah, you know, I, I think I know where you're coming from because even with the artists, they're not all the same type of artists. They don't use the brush or the, the, uh, the blade or the uh, whatever messages. the same way as, as the others do. Yeah, they have different messages. Mm. Um, I think it's very confusing for enthusiasts and it can be very limiting because unless they realize that they should be focusing on the art aspect, forget altogether what genre they're going into there I, I i got quite a um i get i get annoyed at people calling themselves street photographers and going out and taking photos of old ladies from behind carrying their shopping or three photos with somebody on a mobile phone you know that's what does that mean it's nothing you're, you're going out and looking for a chance um moment that doesn't mean or do anything so too much time is wasted there if you're great at photography or you know how to handle the the equipment don't go and just wait for something random to happen go and create something go and capture something and tell a story with it or take your camera out into and, and do an assignment do a real photographic assignment like a photojournalist does like the guys at the world press do like thomas lazar does that to me yeah. is a 
photographer, but he does it in his own way. You know, yeah. there, are, there are people who just have the same trick over and over and 5,000. And then they, then they justify it by saying, well, you know, he's done it 5,000 times. So that's a body of work. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. And you know what? You don't have to listen to my opinion on it because there'll be people that won't agree with what I say. But, um, but I think it's discouraging for some people who would like to learn different genres of photography or get in and they get pulled into these. I mean, social media, there's a lot of talking, there's a lot of trolling. There's, I mean, even my opinion, it should, people should take everything with a grain of salt. Um, you've just got to find your own vision and, and go for it. Don't try to satisfy your friends. Don't shoot for likes. You know, I think take more salt with the compliments than you do with the negative feedback you ever get. You know, I think that's a good point you just made there, as you guys. Just a, a sort of just a, a, to cut in. Don't shoot for likes, and that is that is so important. So so many people uh, involved in photography love to have their work shown on, on a screen, and 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 I suppose at the end of the day, yeah, we like people to say, yeah, that's a great photograph, and get the plus and get the like, but don't shoot for it if you get my drift. You know, try and try and sort of as you say, create something different. That there is bucket loads of photographs out there street photographs as it is termed uh, yeah. of passers-by as you say or the biker going past or as you say the old lady from behind carrying the shopping um sometimes i'd like to think that the street photography is the wrong title for for the genre i think it should be more along the line of documentary but then of course you cross over into the fact where those that do the assignment are really the guys that are, are creating the true documentary photography aspect yeah don't, don't get me wrong the, the guys that can capture those candid spontaneous moments some of them are masters you know yeah Thomas Lazar does that I've been out with him and he'll just walk next to me and he'll look at what I just caught I was like how did you do that you know you didn't say it no. but he's one in a hundred thousand that are out there showing their photos every five minutes patting each other on the backs who are not shooting at his level or don't understand what he's doing, you know, and photographers like that. Um, yeah. I think the more you start to learn about your own weaknesses and you start to see what it is that you want to improve in your photography, you can see it in others. You know, you can see the greatness in others and it's, and it's, it's exciting and it's frustrating. Sometimes you think, damn, why is it so easy for that guy? You know, and, it, and believe me, it's not the guys with the biggest followings or the, the, the most likes on, um, whatever it's called, 500 picks or this or that, you know, mm -hmm. it's got nothing to do with that. People, I mean, it's, it's great to kind of, as you're learning, compare and try to do what these other guys are doing. When we did workshops where we gave a lot of techniques to help people manage, yep. uh, merge street photography with fashion, et cetera. And I, and I think um, I'm happy I did that because I hopefully it, I helped people to take it to that next level and give them some simple tools and break the confidence barrier. But, they need to then progress and do something else. And if they want yeah. to, for most people, it's a hobby, but there are a lot of people with some of the companies out there that are, it's not a hobby. They're, they're professionals and they're regurgitating the same kind of stuff. That's not, not inspiring. As, a, as, a, as I said to you, and I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer now uh, I'm talking to you here that the guys that are just basically regurgitating the same type of work is because they are comfortable in their zone and they are, frightened scared to push it out to her in case their work is not liked and yeah. they then they get themselves lost and they think well i can't retreat back to what i was before because i've tried to make the effort to move out of it um which is which is a tough a tough call for them to do especially if they're bringing money on the table if they are a working photographer and need to bring that money in to put bread on the table yeah i mean look it's not easy to create great art it's, it's, it's no. bloody hard. I'm not saying that I do. You know, I, what I'm saying is that I, I'm trying to improve every day as much as I can. I stress about it. I try to, I try to outdo every single shoot. There, I, I can pick holes to death out of my entire book. I mean, there are times mm. when I, I'll just start again. I'll just erase all this stuff and start again. Yeah. And you learn, you know, and, and when you talk to some of the great guys, they, they go, look, it's, calm down. It's always like that. <laughs> always make mistakes. Exactly right. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody else likes it. You, 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 talk about, <laughs> <laughs> you talk about Thomas Lazar, and, and I must be honest, he's, he is certainly one of my favourite uh, guys in terms of street photography that goes out there. But uh, 
is seeing this type of work in the fall and you see see the type of shoots that you've created there and and, and other conversations I have with other photographers you you have to keep an overall view of what is happening in in photography not just not just oh i'm a street photographer i enjoy street i enjoy documentary whatever you want to call it and that's all you look at because i think there is a classic example you will get down one particular alley and there's no other way out of it you're 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 stuck in that mode you've got to consider the other different genres uh that's out there from all the photographers paul i've got to say this it, it links back to you know in my martial art I got very yes. frustrated in the martial art when people started handing out black belts to people that were not qualified. So as a protest, I never graded beyond my first degree. I used to grade people up further with under the Grand Masters, but I never took it first because it was a protest for people just allowing others to validate them and then walk around with the black belt and pretend that they're great. Now with photography, people love to be part of a crew, a team, where yep. they all validate each other and they all say that each other are great and then they just get more and more insular and start looking more like each other because they're only great if the other one agrees. Like they're all shooting exactly like themselves. And yes. they're, not, they're not creating, they're not changing anything. They're, they're not improving, they're not making art. And that's, and that's a shame, you know? Yeah. It doesn't have to look like that. It doesn't matter what it is you're gonna do. If you wanna go and shoot lingerie, do it differently. There's, there's yeah. always going to be a new way to do it. Yeah. You know? In, uh, there's um what look at what, the way, you know, what you're saying in this look at the way it's been done and then think of a different way of doing it yeah and, and, and well think of what you want to say that's different and then it'll naturally come out differently that's what i believe but yeah. if you go out and try to copy which is what a lot of people do then you're not going to improve no you? you're not you're not <laughs> so what's what's the next what's the next step for alex lambrex next next stage what uh, where are we moving on to well, I'm, I, as in my photo Graphic director role. I'm I'm loving working with top photographers. I'm I'm loving having to review who I want to work with next. Give people that um, are unknown an opportunity that I think are, that are fantastic. Give them the tools because often some of our work becomes greater. It's it's a sum of the team. So when you put a fantastic stylist, hair and makeup, talent, location, production, me, you know the whole crew, the text, everything. You're going to create something fantastic, you know. Um, and I love giving people that opportunity. You know, so I'm, I was also limited in where I want to be by the people I could work with. You know, that's the slow thing. You've got to start working with these guys to get to that, and then, you know, and you all learn from each other. I've been learning quite a, a lot all all along, you know. And you find that, especially with photographers, we don't unless you're assisting, which I never did. You don't know how the other guys shoot. You don't know how they work. You don't know what they say to the models. You don't know what they say to the hair and makeup team. You know, all yeah. those other teams work with photographers all the time. They all know what everyone else is like, but they, but we don't as photographers. We have no idea, you know. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of find your own way. But I think that's what makes it fantastic. When I talk to Jasmine, who shot with hundreds of people, thousands, she said they're all very different. Um, but that's why you guys. Your photography is all very different, you know, and that's yeah. that way. When you find that someone's been assisting with a top photographer and then they come out, the influence is often there, you know, and you can see it. So I think it's kind of um, it's fun that I didn't have didn't have that. I was naive in that regard, like I haven't had that exposure in the commercial sense. I just came in my own way, um, and and it kind of helps. But you know, you need to. I'm very excited about helping people that then they might not even be up and coming. They might already be there but they're looking for a more exciting shoot to do, you know? And, and, and that's been a com comment that we've had when we've worked with some of the guys are like, you know what, I, I've been shooting for some time, but this is fun, this is good. They saw the mood board and they're like, this is, this is all awesome, you know? So, and that's very liberating in it. So, so that's, uh, that's uh, and the, the next uh, issue of The Fall is gonna be when? You're hoping to be it's around, did you say in, August? Uh, it's coming out end of August, September. Yeah, so it's gonna be like a yeah, September issue, but I think end of August we're shooting for. Um, so we've got the next six months or so to shoot and then lots of editing and, and messing. Have you got any, uh, a, a, can you give away any of potential names of photographers that are going to be in the next uh, magazine? Well, it's not you? About, as you know, it's not about photographers. Um, it's more about, we've got some very big name uh, stars, very huge ones, that I won't say just yet because we've had um, scheduling issues in the past. It's, it's hard enough to sure. get one person, but when you've got to line them both up on a certain day, 
we've had so many things like that. So it's kind of like it all fall into place in the end, as they say. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I won't give too much away, but we've got some, we've got some very big names, photographic as well, shooting some uh, fashion editorials for us. Um, Ellen von Arweth, for example, I can tell you, will be shooting in the next issue. She loved it. She wanted to do a launch for us in Paris, and we said, "Well, okay, well, let's get you to shoot with us first. <laughs> you know. Awesome. Um, but she, you know, there are a lot of people that really love the product, the concept, because it's um, it's fresh. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a it, is, it is fresh. There's no doubt about it. It's, it, it is a, it's, it's a, it's a great way for a magazine to be presented in this in this way because, as I said in in my short blog about it, it it's not in terms of uh, a how to do magazine. It's not a seasonal magazine. As okay, it's now winter. This is where you should be looking to shoot, and this is how you do it, um, and so on and so forth. It, it is. It's just a great insight into into projects into shoots and uh and to to read about how um you know the the writers well, well you know at the same time, if you look at the at the articles the articles don't relate to the photography what the insight is is it's a portraiture so for example when tony hickok shot leighton mista um he's a horror movie director he's yeah learning his photography still photography at the moment and i'm helping him a little bit and i thought I'm going to get you shooting on the roller flex, which in hindsight is, is a very difficult camera to shoot on on your first time with the full, you know, with everything we had. And let, let's bear in mind when we're shooting celebrities of um, Mister's status, you've got it for like three hours. You know, we're trying to do 15 shots in, in something that normally will take the entire day. You know, Olga Kurilenko, we had her for three hours. You know, and luckily Simon just he knew oh, we just got to churn through this. Um, but when you're brand new, like Tony was, and and a and a rolly flex hard enough, you know, you really chucked him in the deep end. You threw him in the deep end, and the photos are beautiful. They look, they've got this horror vibe to him. He, you know, we get, we set the scene, we work through it, um, but he brings that magic to it, and his relationship with her, that portraiture, it's an intimate um, example of the chemistry that they had, you know. When, when uh, you look at Asa Butterfield and Joshua Kane, I set everything up. It's a Leica, you know, air system's hard enough to use in the, in the first place in a studio. Um, and he's like, okay, look, I've played around, dude, with cameras, but I said, it's fine. What I want to see is what you guys create. And I basically just sat back. I get a little, bring him out of the light. I don't want too much light, you know, so we get more backlight, little bits and pieces, but the ideas of him jumping, the, the, the motions, Everything that they created, they did themselves. You let them go, you know, and that's what the photography is about. It's not about how hard is it to use this camera. It's showing them that it's, it's that portraiture. That's what we wanted to capture, and that's what we caught. Yeah. You know, with Helena, we set the scene. We go, let's do this or that. When Tiger turned up, he didn't talk for the first hour. <laughs> you know, he's, a, he's an interesting yeah. character. But he went straight into the reverent mood because I sent him a mood board months in advance. Um, Malcolm X was the vibe. And Martin Luther King, very solemn, and we were going to go for that kind of a styling, and it's going to be very. And he turned up in the zone, and <laughs> um, but the styling was a little bit more hip hop. It was more contemporary. It was it's fantastic, um, and they and they just they just went with the, with this mood. And she was like, "Yeah, he hasn't said anything, but it's, it's working." Where I'm like, it's "Incredible chemistry," and that's what the images are about. It's not. It's not about the gear. It's not about any of that stuff. It's, it's, it's no, no, exactly. Yeah, I can see that through, through the, looking through the magazine. Yeah, Alex, it's been fascinating to talk to you uh, about this new project and uh, all your other uh, changes which have happened to you since we last met. Walking along South Bank, having a chat, <laughs> and uh, with a bit of luck, we'll be able to do that again. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this evening and uh, um, passing on your comments about basically really about how we're perceiving the photo industry is at, at the moment and how uh, how things are progressing. I don't um, know if it makes any sense. I've, I've, I've given a lot of opinions. But like I said, you know, you have to take – it should just be a different perspective for people to look at. And, uh, you know, I, I get people asking me how do, I be, how do I become a professional photographer? How can I make a living out of it? It's, it's, it's art in, it, in the way that I approach it. So make your name as an artist. What's your look? What's your, what's, what's your whole brand? How, what, you know, what are you doing? And try to copy other people. Have something to say, you know. And it can be, and it can be very different. It, my work doesn't necessarily mean that I only like work like mine. Let's, and to be very honest, 
um, my inspirations are very different to my own photography. Yeah, sure. Um, and my own photography is not where I want it yet. You know, so I'm, I'm really not bigging up my own photography. To be honest, I'm going to I'm going to counter that from what you said. Will it ever be where you want it to be? Um, yeah, look, because you're always, always you're always searching you're always searching for it to be the yeah. next stage. No, no, it's let, like let, let's take a simple analogy. It's like when Manchester United won the triple uh, the triple the, the FA Cup the uh, well the quadruple the FA Cup the league the uh, championship and the, uh, the European Champions League. Everyone said, "Well, what's going to happen to the team?" And they all turned around and said, "Well, we're going to go again and try and do it again and do something different." So that really is the same sort of approach. You, I get the impression I don't think you'll ever be satisfied with your work. No, no. Look, I, I'm very happy with the Superman shoot. It's exactly how I wanted it to come out. I can't do that one again. It's beautiful. I love it. That's so, what I'm saying. You've done that, so it's a case of moving on to the next one. Don't oh, you know, exactly. That's what I'm saying. But, but, I, but I'm That's not I'm saying, saying. That, I, that I hate my work. You know, it, it's, no, 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 no. Not sometimes I love at all. it, but there's always something to improve. There's always something that if it can yeah. be done better. Though. There's so much to. There's so many spinning plates in that moment. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Pulling right. Alex, thanks so much for joining me. I really, I thoroughly enjoy, always enjoy talking to you and uh, all the best for uh, the next edition of, of The Fall and all the very best for your uh, your next project, whoever you're shooting commercially for. Um, just to say uh, thanks very much indeed. We've had, uh, we've had quite a few uh, live viewers actually. I hope they've enjoyed the show as much as I've enjoyed talking to you. Um, suffice to say, if you're going out shooting this weekend, leave your camera bag at home. Bye for now.